Let me ask you a question. I don't know if people know this. I think many mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed you have quite an affinity towards the state of Israel. It's almost central yeah. to your life. Why is that? Well, this began, this, this story has a beginning. My father was a golf prof professional in Scarsdale, New York. He had three boys. We were one year apart. The reason why he had this job at Sunningdale Country Club was because these Jewish people, it was a Jewish club, German Jews, they came to this country, wanted to play golf, wanted to join one of the clubs, and weren't allowed in the clubs. So, uh, so you know, they didn't complain. They went around raising the money to buy land, and they built the club. And because of their ingenuity and because of their flexibility and vision, my dad had this job. So I knew at a very early age the insanity of uh, anti-Semitism. I remember when I, in the 40s, I was born in 1938, in the 40s, I remember seeing a Life magazine picture of a little boy behind barbed wire. And I, I identified with that boy. I said, that could be me. What are they doing to these people? And for, oh, that stayed with me all my life. So I've felt a real responsibility in a certain sense to stand up against anti-Semitism, right? And in that journey, I've gotten very close to the Jewish people. Now, there's another aspect to it, and that is my father. My father was a very poor boy. He was uh, eight years old when he caddied at this country club. And uh, he was a very cute kid. He had white blonde hair. They used to call him Whitey. And uh, he, he would tell the story on himself. He, he, was, he was a charming man, my dad, and had a great sense of humor. And, he, and he'd tell us the story. He said, uh, you know, how he would caddy at eight years old. He was making more money than his dad was, taking care of his family. Uh, and uh, three, three siblings. And uh, at the 16th hole, he would say, you know, he, would, and he, would, he had this wonderful way of, <laughs> he was a good actor, my dad, in some ways, although if you put a camera on him, he, 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 went, uh, he, he became nervous and did other things, but he had this way of being, you know. And he said, the 16th hole, this little boy would say, you know, it's my birthday today. <laughs> oh, Whitey, is it? And then we'd reach in that pocket at the end of the day and give him a little extra money. And this was important to him, you know. And one day he said that, it's my birthday today, and the man said to him, Whitey, wasn't your birthday three weeks ago? So he was caught, see? But, uh, but they didn't care. They understood what he was doing, and even admired his, his chutzpah for a little kid, you know. And, uh, and they, they kind of embraced this young man, and they taught him many things. My father, this happened later on in my life, I realized that my father had been, uh, when he was instructing somebody else, I found out some of the things that he was given as instruction by these memberships, see, by this membership of the club. He, they would give him words to say at the beginning of the day. Here's three words, Whitey, and at the end of the day, I want you to come back and put them in a sentence or something like that, right? Just improving his, his uh, vocabulary. How old was he when he started? Well, nine, ten, eight, nine. nine, ten, eleven, you know, all the way up. And uh, he, he was fastened to this club. They taught him how to uh, behave at the table, different things, manners and things like that, you know. As I realized, as, as I got older, I said, hmm, that's pretty interesting. And it, uh, it occurred to me when I was 14, I had a kind of an epiphany. My father, who as I have said, he's, he was an extraordinary fellow, very charming man, very poised, full of fun, loved children, was a great father, great storyteller. And... Uh, very principled guy, too. Very st strong m morals, you know. But not, never rigid. Playful, but strong when he needed to be. Everybody admired this guy. 
And when he was 16, this membership made him a pro at the club, one of the pros. When he was 18, they made him the head pro of, of Sunningdale Country Club, a position which he's held till his passing when he was 63 years old. And it occurred to me when I was 14, I said, you know something? I compared him to his siblings, two sisters and a brother. They were nothing like him. Uh, he was so superior in every way, not to demean them, they were very nice people. But they just didn't have the same qualities he had and the grace that he had. And I said to myself, you know something? My dad was raised in the Jewish culture. That's who he is. So... And this has stuck with you. Oh, it's very moving when I talk about it. Yeah. And, uh, and so this idea, uh, you know, it, it stayed with me. And my friends have been uh, extraordinary Jewish people all through my life. But I... And, and then I went through a crisis at a certain time in my life, and I was looking at all religions, and I was raised Catholic, and I have a great regard for the Catholic Church and uh, the, what, the, what it gave me and the teachings that, uh, and the schools that they have today are very good. They're on another level than the public schools and, uh, you know, the hospitals and all of this and the, and the great people, you know, John Paul II, uh, whose part I played at one point, and, and Mother Teresa is one of my heroes. So... I have great regard for the Catholic Church, but I, I, I did a lot of investigating of all religions, and I came to understand much of the Jewish history. There's a wonderful book by Paul Johnson, uh, History of the Jews. It's a great book, folks. Great book. And, and, and you, Paul you Johnson is a great man. Eyes. What's that? You have tears in your eyes. Well, the, the, I, think, I, I think righteousness uh, brings emotion out of me. I, I th I think people who, have, uh, who seek truth uh, are those who I would, um, uh, you know, seek to follow. I hope, hope I, I, I'm thought of one of those at the end of my days. But uh, anyway, there's so many great people, and, and, uh, and so I've looked at this history of the Jewish people, and at one point I said, the greatest wonder of the world is Jewish literature. With all the different, you know, the, the rabbis, the great Einsteins of the Jewish people uh, across the years were rabbis. They made commentary on this Bible that they had. We have just coming up almost at the present time with the Hasidic people when there was a need for something else in the Jewish world. When people were, uh, the people in Europe, this part of Central Europe, were, um, were bereft of, of the ability to, to read all this literature then this fellow came along called the Baal Shem Tov, and he taught them songs. He said, you, you, you simply need to be, you know, happy in your work. You follow this, follow this, behave in a certain way, and here's some songs to remind you of, of the truths of things. And, and uh, so right up to the present. And that's why I came to the, the Jewish, the Baal Shem Tov began a legacy that wound up in my backyard in, in, in California, uh, the Chabad, and, the, and, and I've made friends with these, with these fellows, and they're a fun group, really lots of fun, and, and they help people, and I've danced on their telethon, danced mm -hmm. the Hasidic dance with the Hasidic and it became quite a deal. So anyway, I've, that's, that's my story with the, my affection well, for the Jews. it's very fascinating, people. and it explains why you go to Israel, why you do what you do. And when we come back, John White, I want to ask you another question. You used to be a liberal. How did where, you become did a liberal? Oh, yeah. Find I, that out. I found that out. <laughs> and then you became a conservative. Yes. I want to know how you became one and then how you became another.